Hi there. Hey there. How are you? Pretty good, Jonathan. Nice to see you. I think uh, Len should be joining. Well, I think we're just, we're the only two right now, but there will be more people. Yeah, I've talked to Shavo. I know he's almost. I talked to him this morning, so I know he's on pretty soon. Okay, terrific. And Len usually gets on right exactly at 11. I'm sure he'll he'll be here. So hang hang tight. Thank you. Where Are you in LA as well? No, I'm actually in Phoenix. Oh, okay. Cool. Phoenix. Uh, that's why I had to move the time because I'm my, uh, I some plays high-level hockey and there's a tournament and I had to squeeze this in between uh the games <laughs> oh wow are you able to go I mean, to the nothing game? bad i wasn't i'm sorry are you able to go to the game or you have to watch yeah it right after yeah yeah after this interview uh, take off the rinks rink is two miles from this hotel so Sweet. it's it's good how uh how old is the your weather son? is gorgeous man He's, oh is uh, it 16, 17 he just turned 17 oh how cool yeah he's very very talented so it's good yeah. Is he like NHL prospect kind of thing? Uh, you know, I don't want to say that because that's just, you know, it's hard to Pressure. say at this age. But yeah. He got, no, but he, yeah, he's, he's got potential. Let's just leave. I just think that he's got a lot of hard work. It's like a good musician, right? Like yeah. just because you're a good musician doesn't mean you're going to make it. Yeah, exactly. It was exactly what my son is, 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 is a good musician. <laughs> my son is, is a 15 and a good musician, but again, yeah, we're trying to have him have a plan B. Well, that's what it is with him. He's going to go yeah. to, he got drafted for the, my son got taken. So he's, yeah, he's going to go in the minors. I mean, he got drafted because they drafted really young in hockey. So he got drafted by semi-pro team. So it's like, he's going to get his chance. What what happens after this, it's all on, on him. You know what yeah. I mean? Yep. Oh, well, there's yeah. Len. Do you guys know each other? Probably not. We do. Oh, you do? <laughs> Oh, let me see. Hang on. Oh, hey, what's going on? Yeah, we, we had a conversation. <laughs> so what's, what we what's that? We're waiting for Shabba. Okay. We're waiting for Shabba. Right? Yep. Yep. But you guys, you guys have met. We had a brief conversation, uh, but not like in depth. I, I, I am very, I'm very grateful for you to be You're here. Shabba. Yeah, because uh, it's it's super inspiring the things that you were able to achieve in business. Uh, as an immigrant, I'm an immigrant as well, so I'm really really grateful. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, Shaw. What's up, John? Good, good to see you again, man. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm 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 in every podcast these days. I know. Though. I'm like, whoa. What's going on? <laughs> I'm, no, good. Glenn, I'm good. I co-host this one with Len, but Len, meet Chavo. Pleasure, bro. You too, man. How are you? I'm great. Yeah. What what shirt do you have on today? Your kiss shirt? Me? Well, yeah. It's no, no. Glenn's got a. <laughs> well, yeah, I have my kiss shirt, and the reason why I have that is because Shava's on. So yeah, I, yeah. I, well, thank I, you. I, I do my homework. <laughs> I was definitely the big kiss fan. Man. That's what I said. Well, that's what started it, you know, for me. That was what started exactly. It. Yeah. 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 I, I got it. I got the. Uh, distinct honor and pleasure of speaking on on the stage where Kiss performed in Detroit, and I came out. I'm like Detroit Rock City, everybody. And they're like, we don't have anything. We don't care about what you have to say. It's like the governor elect is there, and and she's uh, like, I'm on the panel with uh, all these politicians. They can care less that it's rock and roll. You know, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah. I would that you wanted the best, and you got it. That's what I was. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's good. Uh, all right, just, well, I, go for it. I'll go for it. So, um, you know, we're taping this, this is recorded, we'll edit it, but I uh, just want you guys, thank you for joining. And I know you guys have a hard outs at 1145, but we won't, we won't go much longer than 30 minutes. Um, yeah, and, uh, uh, so this is lens real, really lens podcast. I just, I just come along for the ride. I'm the Robin, uh, that's great. Robin Gibbons. I'm the Robin. Yeah, just go. Gibbons. See, Robin Quivers. Oh, Quivers. I always say Robin Gibbons. Not Robin Gibbons is the one who's not Robin that's Mike Tyson's that. man. No, that's not good. That was Mike Tyson's. Yeah. Hey, no, the Robin Quivers. Hey, John. So, from a logistic standpoint, since we never had two guests to answer the questions that were that we ask, uh, do we just ask one at a time? How do you? Where, no, where? just yeah. Oh, I'm, 
I'm we'll, comfortable with Chavo. He'll step in when he wants to. And yeah, we talk a lot together. Like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we'll, 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 no, the, we'll, the reason, so we have we, like every guest we ask three questions of. So we'll, uh, so we'll probably just ask you individually those three questions and, and yeah, we'll figure it out. It's, or it's we'll just pass it to each other, man. It's all good. I mean, yeah. you know, it's just like a, just yeah. like a joint. Yeah. Um, Let it go. yeah well, well, right. well, well, joined pre. Yeah, exactly. pre -COVID. Pre -COVID. We have to make clear that. Yes, please, I, please. I have, I have the, glass. The I, have, I have glass joint holders. So okay, I me too. Joint I, holder, pass it on and pass somebody else and give oh. them their own joint holder. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, yesterday I'm checking into my hotel in Arizona, right? So, uh, yeah. And then there's people walking around. I see people walk around, I turn around. I'm like, they're not wearing masks. No. So I turn around <laughs> the front desk and I said, do I have to wear my mask? Because I'm checking in with the mask. This day goes, no, it's optional. If you want to wear it, wear it. You know, you don't. So today yeah. I'm walking around and I'm without a mask and I'm feeling like I'm stealing. Like, you know, you like a little. No, no, I know that feeling. I know. And I'm looking around. I'm like, man, what have they done? What yeah. have they done? Yeah. So, That's what it... yeah, I know. I'm actually was at a Target store walking around with no mask. I felt, I mean, I've had COVID, so yeah. I'm not really too concerned. Uh, I, well, I mean, I'm concerned about it, obviously, but it, but at least not getting it. So I'm more about let me let me be free. <laughs> yeah. You know what's crazy is um I just read that we're gonna have concerts starting June 15th, right? I got nervous. I was like, oh shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. Is that you know, like because it's they've made it such a taboo. Everything that like being personal, being like close is a taboo. Uh, getting a hug from someone is kind of awkward and it's yeah. i knew that was going to happen right when they started doing this like a year ago i said to myself this is going to affect the psyche of a lot of people like majority oh, yeah, yeah. of because it's just weird even shaking your hand you don't know if it's a pound an elbow anymore if it's a, if, yeah. if they're cool to shake your hand so yeah man every, everything feels like you're getting away with murder now it's like taking a mask off give me a break you know that's <laughs> what, what, what do you think about the whole concert thing because they said they're going to be like 20 percent capacity so how are like big bands gonna come out well, we have money? we have our shows booked in october right. and we're playing bank of california so i'm thinking like i don't think they already have sold out so yeah. i don't I bet it's full capacity sold out. So I don't know how they're gonna twenty percent. The same thing with GNR. I've I've no, but that's October. But that's today. I, October will be different though. Yeah, maybe. Right. I hope so. Yeah, I, I hope, hope so too. Because we're not gonna. What are we gonna say? You can come and you can't. You both bought tickets. It's crazy. Oh, they you sold out the whole place. Do, yeah, you have to do awesome. five different shows for the same yeah. dollar. Uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm, right. I'm actually okay with that. You have to ask somebody else about that one. Yeah. But you don't get paid more money, Shav. You get the same money for one or five. It's not. It's, I, I love playing live. live. Yeah, Remember, you're talking to me, live. bro. Yeah, <laughs> he was like, you're talking to me. I love to play live. So it's, um, you know. All right. This is good stuff. We got to get this on. All right. So, Len, I'm going to. Oh, well, look at that. I'm trying to get an endorsement from Ro The Rock. This no. is really oh, uh, nice. <laughs> really, really that's awesome. what I should be doing, John. That's really good product place, man. Yeah, that's what you should be doing with your. Well, everybody should. Here, I'm, why am I'm giving magical butter a shout today just because it was the first hat I could find but um all right <laughs> so uh I should wear my 21 red hat today actually there you go um but 22 22 Congrats. what I said 21 because I got 20 because I was 21 when I first started now is that, a new one? Is, that a, is that a new company that just came yeah, exactly. it used to be 21 oh, red but then they, I got another Sorry, I was listening to my Taylor Swift record and then I got confused and <laughs> next year it'll be 23 red uh, so. <laughs> exactly exactly all right my bad we already started off there it is, 22. Two, two. No, All right. like, yeah, okay, let's go. Let's do this. All right, three, two, one. Len, you are live. You are on stereo. Yes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another episode of Everything is Personal. Yeah. All right. All right, <laughs> no bro. Clap, no nothing, no sound effect, John. Uh, we got, <laughs> heard, no, we got a serious it. sound effect. I mean, here's my, my bong sound effect. There you go. And... <laughs> As always, I didn't even introduce you. As always, everybody knows my <laughs> wonderful co-host, Mr. John Small. Hey, what's up? What's up, everybody? I, I'm super I'm excited. I'm in the shadow already, of greatness today. I know. We already started talking, uh, but uh, super, super excited to have uh, Harry Kazarian and the- uh, Kazazian. Kava. Kazazian. Yeah. And by the way, Kazazian, I just want to sorry. Say, it says Luca on my- I just noticed it because my kid got to my computer. So I just want my- my <laughs> You're not Luca. You're Harry Hazazian. Oh, Says my name is Luca. Luca Kazarian. No, that's Luca. I'm not making it for my kid today. It's that's all fine. good. <laughs> no, no, nobody pays attention anyway. Don't even worry. Yeah. But it's super exciting, man, to have you guys on. Uh, Harry, 
I, I just wanted to say, I was talking a little bit before we started, but I, you know, being an immigrant myself, I was born in Lithuania uh, and I immigrated. Uh, I think I, I, I was listening to uh, so an interview that Shavo did. I think he said you, know, you immigrated in 79. I immigrated in 79 as well. Oh, wow. Uh, and uh, came over and I lived in Philadelphia and then I moved to LA about uh, 12 years ago. And I, Lithuania was also part of the Soviet Union and all that stuff. And it's just so amazing to see uh, like an immigrant success story or immigrant success stories. And uh, I wanted to kind of maybe give our audience a little bit of a brief overview of uh, your journey from, you know, the Sunset Strip and the uh, Iron Tears and all the stuff that you were, <laughs> you were involved in before. <laughs> I, I, I definitely try to find... Huh? People I try to find some videos on YouTube, man, and see. Oh, no, you don't like, want to. You don't want I, to. I that found one. He has long hair. I, 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 I found so one. <laughs> oh, did you? oh, God, you serious? Oh, yeah, God. We'll, we'll, we'll play for the audience afterwards so everybody can see. Oh, but, my God. But I wanted to see oh, how, how that kind of uh, came about from, from those playing days and just, you know, doing what, and then going into becoming – you know, a, a successful entrepreneur in, in your previous business or the business you're in now and then where you are today. So maybe you can yeah. give- I'll uh, give a brief one. Uh, brief uh, one. Like you said, you, you teed it up about an immigrant family. You know, I, we moved here when I was personally five years old. So I don't know anything else, but, uh, but I learned work ethics uh, from my parents. My mom worked at a, as a, in a sweatshop just sewing every day, you know, 12 hour days, six days a week. And my dad was a janitor. Uh, cleaning up floors and then painting and doing all that. I remember like as a kid, literally sleeping on the floor. We had one bed, four kids, you know, uh, my parents slept on the floor. I mean, and you know, what's funny as I say this, I'm not saying it for everybody to listen, for anyone to feel sorry for myself. It's actually not. I, I got to tell you, I had a very happy childhood because I was loved and we loved one another. So Really, you know, there's an overplay nowadays about materialistic things. Yeah. And yes, I have the nice house now. I have the Porsche. I have all the nice things that money would buy you. Uh, but honestly, it doesn't give me any more happiness than it did when my parents were around and my brother and my family and my kids. We grew up happy. So, you know, I guess they always say you don't know better, but really love overcomes all of that. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's really it's important about that in community and, you know, and then uh, the good things happen monetarily later in my life. But how many people do you know, or you heard of that have everything go all the money in the world and fame and whatever, but they're miserable. Oh yeah. So a lot, a lot. money can't buy love. Uh, but I think a lot of feeling good within and everything else is important. And really my connection with Shavo was same thing going up. I wanted to be in a band and, before they were even system was actually the studio they yeah. they came to practice and Sabo and I missed each other but Serge and their band is their oldest uh, member yeah. and yeah. I'm not going to give away my age but he's closer to me than I'm than I <laughs> but you're giving away his age right now <laughs> he's a bridge between Shavo and I so you know he auditioned for my band actually really? and uh, tell you the truth is. We kind of had, he because he was more in the classical and opera type stuff and music, and, and we were more like a hair metal band. And I remember we got done with the audition because we were telling him play something really deep, like Mr. Crowley from back then, that's what was in, you know, from, uh, say, give me something deep, you know, like Ozzy and whatever. And then he would play something really beautiful. And then when we were done, we we're like, that guy is never going to make it. So it's funny. <laughs> good, good judge of talent. Right. right. We didn't make well, it. He made it. Well, well so. he, he was trying out as a keyboard guy, not as a singer. Yeah, uh, yeah he, he was. He was a singer. Well, you were right then. You're probably right. Yeah, he never Way made it. As a, but he plays keys on stage too once in a while. So I can't say that. Right. But it just goes to show you, you know, when you go full circle, how things work out. You know, it's just at that point in life, we just, you know, music, I guess. Uh, was something I had a passion for in the arts. I've always loved it growing up. I, you know, but it's funny, you don't play music for the money. You do, most musicians don't make money playing music. Shavo knows that. And most of your life as a come up musician, you better love it. And everybody goes, so what'd you do the music for? I'm like, the chicks, man, all the chicks. Exactly. Back then, all the guys were getting the chicks for the hair band. They're like, why'd you get into it? I said, I got into it like everybody does when they're 16 because they want to pick up chicks. So, 
anyway, so that's where it leads to it. And, you know, so were you, uh, Shabo, were you a you, fan? Were you a fan of, uh, of Floatsam and Jetsam? Because uh, you call, did you call your band Iron Tears because they had a, this crazy speed metal song uh, called Iron Tears? You know, no, it, I, I wasn't. It was just, you know, we were just four guys. Three of them were drunk. We were all, everybody just, I think if you talk about every band, how they come up with their name, it's usually at a moment where everybody's either intoxicated or just someone has a brain fart or whatever. Right. But great and it goes forward shop i don't know how you guys came up with your band's name but i think it's pretty much no no know, like someone sits around and there's a process like well, a ours was a ours was a, from a poem darren wrote that was called victims of a down uh, i didn't like victims i didn't want to be a victim i i, I was right. like if we ever get big people are gonna yell victim instead of, you know <laughs> like that's i don't want to be yelled you know because it's a long name and at the time there was bands like corn and deftones and it was like not long the only name I knew long was like Rage Against the Machine, which was kind of cool. Right. So, so when he came back, he's like, "Okay, I get it." And then yeah, we we're like, "System is fully encompassing the victims. Like the victims are a part of the system. So system right. is bigger." And if someone yells "system," it's kind of cool because there's no like weak way of saying the word "system." It's like stressed s i you know s y s s you know you can't you can't be like sis you know you can't you're gonna yell it with you know so that was a big thing. More that was right. So yeah, so it made sense after a while, but then we had to explain to everyone and their mother the, the way, because like the first marquee we were, um, it was at the Roxy and we, we, I couldn't wait, you know, like we showed up there early for sound check and noon, you know, waiting for the doors to open. I look up at the marquee, couldn't wait, take pictures, my camera's ready, my disposable, and it said, system of the dawn. 